Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Savior of the world, and so we come here to say thank you to our God for sending our Savior. I am Pastor Fulmer of First Lutheran Church in Altoona. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being in person. And we come together to share our faith. Each week that we come together, we are saying to one another that we trust in God's love, we trust in God's mercy, and we want to be people who will be able to share that throughout life. And we know that his steadfast love is here. And yes, steadfast love that may be having something to do with Valentine's Day. I see you in red, look beautiful. This is the Sunday of the Transfiguration, so I'm wearing white. But it is a love that is fulfilled in Jesus' love, a desire that is uh, beyond our human capacity, but Jesus fills us with divine love. So thank you for being here. We do have a safe worship situation because we have excellent air quality with the Remy Halo air filtering system, and we are following safety in our seating and masks and so forth. I do have an update on a few of our members. Rex Culp. Rex is continuing his chemotherapy. He'll be in Pittsburgh tomorrow for another session, his fifth time. And then also Tim Stetzer is in therapy for cancer. Uh, we want to hold these, our friends in Christ, uh, asking for complete healing. And we have one person in the hospital right now, and that is Jim Lowe Sr. Jim has been to the hospital a number of times for breathing issues, and he's there again. So we ask for that blessing. Do you know that this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday? We have a service at noontime, a brief service, and then a longer liturgy at 7 o'clock in the evening. And so I invite you there, Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. Well, let's continue with prayer music, followed with our opening hymn. Please stand with me as we join together in our opening hymn, Alleluia, Song of Gladness, in our new hymnal, 654. 654.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Shine from the mountaintop in our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son, and illumine the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Elisha and said to him, 
Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elisha said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry land. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Let us read responsibly from Psalm 50. The Mighty One, God the Lord, has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of his line, perfect in his beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. With a consuming flame before, and round about a raging storm, Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with you and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the likeness of God's eyes, for it is God who is The second reading is from the second letter to Corinthians, chapter 4. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, 
Rabbi, is it good for us to be here? Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there was a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. My dear friends, good to see you today. Uh, these are days that are coming ahead of us when we are going to be focusing upon God's love in a particular special way. In Jesus giving his life, and we move through the stories of the Gospels to help us to know that better. I love to think about this Transfiguration Sunday as a message about love. A message about love on that mountaintop. And here's why I'm going to tell you that it's about love. You remember Moses, the great lawgiver. Do you remember Moses going up on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, and he had seen God, and when he came down the mountain, his face was brilliant and bright and light, and he had to put a veil over his face so that the people of Israel could see him without being so full of fear. It was thought that anybody who saw the face of God would die immediately because of the greatness of God and his power and his energy, a person would die. And so there were only select people who had seen the face of God, and that, of course, was Moses as one of them. The second person who is noted in our reading from the Old Testament today is Elijah. He was taken, as you know, in the chariots of fire, up into heaven, into the place where God abides. And he, too, it is imagined and thought that he was there with God, seeing God, God's face. God allows certain people to see the face of God. And when we come to our reading today from Mark, and what we call the Mount of Transfiguration, I want to again uh, mark out that we have a time of God's love being revealed because there were the disciples, those main followers of Jesus, the apostles later on, who were there on the mountain and when Jesus' whole body was enlivened with the brightness and the brilliance of God, they were able to see that and they lived and they told the story of God's love. And there was, who else? Moses and Elijah. And they were with Jesus in this brightness and this lightness. And so all of them together were experiencing the face of God. And the disciples got to see the face of God in Jesus. They would remember that. And of course, they relate the story to us in Matthew and in Luke, and in the, not in St. John, it doesn't show up there, but Mark, and Luke, and Matthew. It's about the brilliance of God and the way in which God wanted to show his love. His love in that experience with Jesus that would carry on throughout Jesus' days of ministry and what the disciples were learning. And those three, Peter, James, and John, were always in the center of things. And they had a revelation, something that no one else had had. And they were transformed by that love to be true witnesses to that wonderful love of Jesus Christ. And so I say today is one of those days in which we could say what happened on the mountaintop was filled with love. 
love that was embracing, of course, the whole world and embraces our world here and now, something that we need very much. The love of God to be in our hearts, the love of God to be in our lives, so that we can be that light and love of God going out of this place and encountering who knows how many people we will see today, and we will be able to share in that love of Jesus with them. I did bring something to illustrate that today, and it's uh, sitting up here, and I'd very like, much like to show it to you. This is a great big Valentine card. Now you probably can't read it from there, but I can read it to you. Oh, there's X's and O's, I suppose that's hugs and kisses. Is that what you said? Okay. And it says, be mine, be mine. Happy Valentine's Day. I love you. Nice so far? Oh, it's even better when we get inside. It's even better. More of those hearts, but there are words. Each Valentine's Day that I share with you keeps getting sweeter and sweeter. Happy Valentine's Day, my love, Jesus. Jesus is at the center of love. And on Valentine's Day, we can say, everywhere we go today, we want to express that love. The love that comes from God and is a love that is eternal and is in all of us. Thanks be to God for that divine love. Amen. Please stand with me as we turn to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. Let us make a good confession of our sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things done and left undone. Uphold us our Holy Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of your Almighty God has mercy on you, forgives you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, and strengthens you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit, keeps you in eternal life. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. For creation, sun, moon, and stars, life forming in the dark earth and ocean deep, mountains, clouds, and storms, and creatures seen and unseen, 
and for the Holy Spirit's guidance in our stewardship of God's creation, let us pray. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of government, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world, let us pray. For all who suffer this day, especially those on our prayer and concern list, that Christ our healer transform sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace, let us pray. For companions on life's journey in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, and for guidance during struggles we face, that God's glory is revealed around and among us, let us pray. We trust in God's mercy and grace as we offer a prayer of thanksgiving, knowing that the number of COVID-19 deaths continue to decline. Also, we are thankful for the vaccines being administered in record numbers. Let us pray. Our prayer extends to all who are affected by the COVID-19 virus, for those whose death draws near and for all who suffer. Family and friends painfully cry on and on in mourning for lost loved ones. We have insufficient words, and so silence is our language. Let us pray. Our nation continues to be in distress and turmoil and is facing uncertain times. O oh God, grant us courage and grant us wisdom for the living of these days. Let us pray. Help us celebrate a sense of Valentine love for our circle of friends and family. Love is from God, and so we ask for ways of extending Jesus' love to one another. Let us pray. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, especially missionary Cyril and Methodius, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living, let us pray. Lord Jesus, on the mountain of transfiguration, you revealed your heavenly light. Let your light give us clarity as we prepare for the call of our next bishop. Raise up that person the Allegheny Synod needs. Use us to support the mission and ministry of the one call. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, you are merciful and you hear our prayers always. The prayers that are spoken or the silent ones of our hearts. And we ask for this mercy from the one who dwells among us in love, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And, God bless you. and we share a simple sign of that peace.
ourselves, our time, and our possession, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who, sharing our life, lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to your own brilliant light. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto everlasting life.
Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before offering the blessing, I want to remind you of Ash Wednesday this week. Noon, we have a liturgy at 7 o'clock in the evening on Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.